Hi everyone, I thought I'd make a quick video today to answer a question I get asked a lot, which is what are FODMAPs? So FODMAPs are small lengths of carbohydrates which are fermentable in the gut. There are some very long carbohydrates like starch, but FODMAPs are small lengths of carbohydrates. And they act in two different ways. The first way is some FODMAPs, as they move through your intestines, they can attract water. That means that your digestion can go a lot quicker and it can lead to diarrhea. The other way that FODMAPs work is as they get into your large intestine, the bacteria that live in your gut digest them and they turn them into gas. And that can lead to painful bloating and also constipation as the gas blocks up your intestines. In terms of the categories of FODMAPs, at the moment we can di diagnose about six different types of FODMAP intolerance. There is fructose, which a lot of people have heard of. You mostly find that in fruit, but also things like honey. And then there's lactose, which a lot of people have heard of as well, which you find in dairy products. You've also got sorbitol and mannitol, which are sugar polyols, so um, fermentable sugars in your food. Sorbitol is an artificial sweetener, but it also naturally occurs in some fruits. And mannitol is very commonly found in mushrooms, but a couple of other vegetables too. Then you've got fructans, which you find in onion, garlic, and also wheat. And galacto-oligosaccharides, which is a really, really long word. Um, but you find those ones in your typical gassy vegetables. So beans, cabbage, that kind of thing. There are a couple of misconceptions around FODMAPs that I wanted to clear up for you today as well. So the first thing that a lot of people think is that if you have an intolerance to FODMAPs, you have an intolerance to all of the FODMAPs. And that's absolutely not true. It's very common to have more than one food intolerance. So you might have fructose and lactose intolerance, but it's very uncommon to be intolerant to all six. The second misconception is that if you go on a low FODMAP diet, you have to stay on a low FODMAP diet. And that is also totally untrue. So with a low FODMAP diet, because FODMAPs are the food that your gut bacteria eat, if you go on a low FODMAP diet long term, you're actually not giving those gut bacteria the food that they need. So the best thing to do if you go on a low FODMAP diet is to try a slow reintroduction of foods again. And a dietitian can help you with that. And the third misconception I wanted to talk to you about is about what is a food intolerance? Like what level do you have to be at to have a food intolerance? So I get a lot of people who come in to me and say, oh, I'm getting bloating. I think I have a food intolerance. But at the end of the day, it's only really considered IBS, so a food intolerance, if the bloating is painful or interrupting your life in some way. General bloating of the intestines is totally normal and most people get that. But if the bloating is getting to the point where it is painful and uncomfortable and stopping you from living your daily life, then you might have IBS and you might want to look into um, a food elimination diet. So I hope that's cleared some things up for you and any questions, you're always welcome to send me an email or give me a call.